Hi there, once again this is G, and I figured the series on Mega Bases just would not be complete without an episode on regolith melters. And not because it's a new idea or anything, there are many regolith melter designs out there. Now this particular one is based on design by Tony Advanced, check out the link below for that. But the thing is, most regolith melters produce a lot of igneous rock at the end, and it mostly just sits there. But here, I want to show you how to close the regolith cycle and how you can get the most of your regolith. It all begins up here, where regolith is collected and sent down to the melter on a conveyor belt here. And this particular regolith collector was presented by Francis John. Check out the link below for that. But the regolith here is fed down to the melter. And it's fed down this way. And it's coming in through a mesh of diamond bricks here. And that's going against a counter flow of hot igneous rock that's coming out at about 1200 degrees, give or take. And everything here is in a vacuum. And thumbs up if you like vacuum chambers. Because this one was fairly easy to make. And it's exposed to space, so all the gases just escape. Oh yeah, by the way, there's no space materials in this build. You can see here, no insulation or anything like that. So you can build it mid-game if you'd like. Personally, I've set it up before even getting into rockets. Oh, and I had to work around a couple of features. We have a salt water geyser here and gold volcano. And they're not in the way, you just have to work around them. And it's getting pumped over here. Check out a link below if you want to see how to pump uh, molten metals and magma and things like that. But anyways, the regolith here goes up this obsidian heat spike. And it's backed by another wall here made of ceramic. You can also use obsidian here if you want. I was just a bit short on that. And if you look at the conveyor here, you've got a little loop over here. And as this melts, the loop clears and more regolith is fed in. And this is being heated up by window tiles here made of diamond, which are then contacted to this other window tiles of diamond by these uh, doors here that are operated by the thermosensor that's dipped in molten lead so that it's not in a vacuum. And the thermosensor is set to 1480, but you can set it to a lower value because the way it's set right now, it pulls magma down here and it stops igneous rock from forming for a while. And for me, that's okay because I don't need too much igneous rock, but you can set it lower and then you'll get more igneous rock instead of this pool of magma down here. But anyways, what's interesting here is we have this pool of magma here, but no volcano. And that is because magma in this pool was piped over here through the spout here. And then that was capped off. And then magma here is just being heated by this radiator made of tungsten. And in this radiator, we have tungsten piping through at 2060 coming in and at leaving at 2010. And this is hotter than usual because this magma is made artificially. And that's an integral part of closing the cycle. And I'll show you that in just a minute. Just one thing to know about this pool of magma. You want to make sure you build out this melter before filling up this pool. Otherwise, if you fill up this pool and then you want to go do the plumbing, you might not like the fact that dupes are getting a magma bath here. And they probably won't like it either. Also, about the equipment down here, we have a sweeper, miner, and two loaders, which are doing exactly the same thing. You want to make sure you put the loaders with the arrow up, and everything here is dipped into naphtha without any of the conveyors touching the naphtha itself. And the arrow up here is to make sure that the conveyor belt is not touching the naphtha. Otherwise, it will vaporize, and this melter is going to have a really bad day. Now, as for the cooling of the equipment here, we're just using a hydrogen pipe here with steel contacting naphtha, and otherwise it's just igneous rock. And it just dumps the heat overboard here into the atmosphere, and that works pretty well. Oh yeah, one other thing. We have a little buffer over here for igneous rock, and if we look at the conveyor belt, here we got igneous rock coming out, and there's a bridge. And if this bridge gets full, then everything just gets dumped out of this conveyor chute. And if the bridge is empty, then this sweeper goes to pick up the igneous rock, loads it into this loader, and then the loader just feeds it back into the uh, conveyor belt here. So essentially, we just have a very massive buffer here. You can see there's just as much uh, igneous rock as the eye can see here. So that's why I'm saying is I don't need to produce this constantly. We have a huge buffer here. And until it's exhausted, we don't need to worry about this. And again, this is being cooled by a loop of hydrogen. If we look here, we've got pipes here and here, and they're contacting beads of naphtha to cool loader and the sweeper. Finally, this igneous rock makes its way up to the top, to the turbine hall, this way. And it's looping through this turbine hall here on a conveyor belt. Now, one interesting thing here is this conveyor belt is not wide open. It's being regulated by the shutoff here. And the shutoff activates for two seconds every one second. And this gives us about two-thirds of the full load. You can see here, 
with two packets full and one packet empty, we'll get about 66% of the total output. And that's because I just don't need 100% output. That's why we have that buffer filling up and the regular melter doesn't need to be working at full hog. Now, if we look over here, one problem that I found later on after I built this is I made this only one tile high. And as a result of this, some steam gets occasionally deleted over time and it adds up eventually. So one thing I would have done and you should is make this two tiles high and put the bottom layer as petroleum and the top as steam and that works really well. Otherwise you encounter this issue where steam gets deleted sometimes, which is not great, but I'm too lazy to fix this. So I just left it like this. And here we just have door contactors that check the temperature inside the, the uh, steam box and they close the door if the temperature is just right. Now, if you look at the plumbing, this whole thing is being cooled by a loop of super coolant over here. And this originally was water, but then later I just upgraded to super coolant. And it's being cooled by these aqua tuners down here with separate steam turbines. Now, if you follow this belt here, this way, and down, this comes out to our glass boiler. And this is where this igneous rock gets crushed and then converted back into fresh magma at one quarter of the material. And if we have a look at the plumbing, we have magma coming out at 2200 degrees. I made a separate video on that glass boiler, but here I just want to show you what happens next to this magma. First of all, let me just zoom out a little bit and pardon the lag. Here we have a power plant over here. This is being fed by magma. And this is not an original design. This was first presented by Francis John, at least as far as I know. But in this case, the magma, after it comes out, it's about 160 degrees, goes into this pool of water, which is being cooled by an aqua tuner. And then after that, it's being taken out and it comes out at 25 degrees as igneous rock. So at room temperature. And then here, we have another plant just like that. And we have another one just like that. This was actually the first plant. And then I built this one and then the third one. But in addition to that, these plants are also being fed liquid copper over here for the same exact result. You have liquid copper coming in this way, and then it's just being, heat is being extracted, and then liquid copper drops down here at about 150 degrees, and then it just gets cooled to room temperature and so forth. Same thing happens here with gold, and then extra magma gets stored over here if we look at the plumbing again. This is basically my central magma distribution plant here. Everything comes in here and then goes out. And then from here, we have magma heating over here, this preheater for molten carbon setup. This is currently turned off because it's not needed anymore, but there it is. But most importantly, I want to talk about closing the loop here. So if we take a look at this magma over here, so from the storage, we go up to this point here, and here we are. We are looping this hot magma that came out of the glass boiler and is being used to heat up the regolith melter. And so we have a closed loop here. We started we started with regolith and we turned it into igneous rock and we crushed it back and turned it back into magma. But then we deleted three quarters of the material in the process. As for the igneous rock that comes out of the power plants, well, it gets crushed for the second time here by these crushers. And then what we have here is a conveyor of sand and this feeds into our, you got it, ceramic factory. And I have a separate video for that. And that's all I have for you right now. But if you made it to the end of the video, then I also want to show you this diagram I've made here of the heat flow and the whole process of this base. And here it is. I will also post it in the link below in the description. At any rate, that's all I have for you right now. This has been Greasy Hammer, and if you found this helpful, then smash the like button, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.